Hello everyone, I am Miss Merle and once again I am here to discuss about hemophilus in the HASIC group. So, to start with, we have the objective. So, number one, uh, after viewing and listening to this presentation, the student should be able to differentiate each of the bacterial species in this section by colony and microscopic morphology, habitat, nutritional requirements, and key identifying characteristics. We also have to compare the appearance of the hemophile species when performing tests for determination of the X and V factor requirements. Requirement. Third, uh, students must be able to predict which antimicrobial agents to use in treating infections described in this presentation based on beta-lactamase results. And fourth, we need to compare the pathogenesis including modes of transmission of each of the organisms discussed. And explain the clinical significance of these organisms. Sixth, uh, we need uh, you need to name the appropriate specimens for the recovery of these organisms. And seventh, uh, determine the appropriate culture media required for the isolation of each of the organisms. And eight, the last one is to enumerate the genus and species of the organisms included in the acronym HASEC and the major diseases that they cause. So for the outline, we have the hemophilus about and the HASEC group. So it's great. Uh, I will be talking first about the hemophilus, the general characteristics, and under which we have the uh, species hemophilus influenzae, and infections associated with other hemophilus species, and we have uh, the lab diagnosis and the treatment. For the HASIC group, uh, we'll be talking about Aggregatibacter afrophilus, Aggregatibacter actinomycetum comitans, uh, Cardiobacterium hominis, Echinella corrodens and Kingella. Sorry, uh, we need to remove letter L there. And then um, this one. Uh, this presentation describes miscellaneous fastidious uh, pleomorphic uh, small gram negative bacilli and most of these organisms. Um, they need special nutrients for isolation and identification. The hemophilus species are they are facultative anaerobes and obligate parasites. So facultatively anaerobic and they are obligate parasites that are primarily adapted uh, to the respiratory tract of humans and other animals except uh, one exemption is Haemophilus ducreae which causes the sexually transmitted disease STD or Shankroid and the genera Haemophilus, Actinobacillus, Pasteurella, and Aggregatibacter belong to the family Pasteurella CA. So the uh the family Pasteurella CA they are characteristically gram negative, uh, pleomorphic, cocoid shaped to red shaped cells. They are non motile, they are facultatively anaerobic and they they're capable of forming nitrites from nitrates, and they can they are oxidase and catalase positive. So for the HASIC group, uh, species uh, specific species of the genera Haemophilus, Aggregatibacter, Cardiobacterium, Echinella, and Kingella have been grouped together under the the acronym HASIC. The first letter of each genus. So we have H. Of course, for hemophilus, A for aggregate Ibacter, Cardiobacterium C, Echinella A, E, and Kingella K. And these uh, organisms reside in the human oral cavity in nasopharynx, and some species have an enhanced capacity to cause endocarditis in the heart. Okay. And so uh, the genus Haemophilus consists of uh, gram-negative uh, pleomorphic uh, cocobacilli or rods sorry, that can vary microscopically from small cocobacilli in direct smears of clinical material to long filaments occasionally seen in stained smears of colony growth. Uh, they are non-motile and facultatively anaerobic. They ferment carbohydrates and they are generally oxidase and catalase positive and they are capable of reducing nitrates to nitrites and are they are obligate parasites on the mucous membranes of humans and animals. Uh, there are approximately 
approximately 13 species of Haemophilus and the eight species so we have eight species these eight species are associated with humans and um well uh each uh hemophilus cygnus was renamed aggregati bacter cygnus and h afrophilus moved into the genus aggregati bacter and combined into single species hemophilus paraphrophilus So, uh, for the major pathogenic species include uh, the most members of the genus Haemophilus are non-pathogenic. So, we need to remember that majority of the members of the genus Haemophilus, they are non-pathogenic and they produce or non-pathogenic and they cannot produce opportunistic infections. Well, the major pathogenic species are, we have Haemophilus influenzae, Aegyptius, and Docri. So we have Haemophilus is derived from the Greek word meaning blood lover. And as the name implies, Haemophilus organisms require or need what? Blood. So they require a performed growth factors present in blood. So we have the X factor and the V factor. So X factor, hemin or hematin, and X for it stands for the unknown. And V factor, so nicotinamide, adenine, dinucleotide, NAD. So it's a V for vitamin. So that's it. Hemophilus, a species with a prefix para, require only V factor for growth. So again, if we can see para, that prefix para, these species need only the V factor for growth. Don't forget this one. And both of these um, are present in RBCs. Both of these factors are present in the red blood cells. Only X factor is directly available. And the V factor dependent organism, if they are uh, V factor dependent, they do not grow in SBA because uh, here because rbcs are still intact the sheep's rbcs contain enzymes and what enzyme is that they are the uh, nicotinamide dinucleotide de er, nadases nadases that hydrolyze a v factor and uh again for those uh species with a prefix para they only need the v factor for growth and Again, both X and V factors are found inside erythrocytes. However, only X factor is directly available. And um, for the uh, for us to recover uh, these uh, organisms, so clinical laboratories utilize the chocolate agar for the recovery of hemophilus species from clinical specimens. So we need to use the chocolate agar for the recovery because uh, the lysing of the RBCs by heat in the preparation of the chocolate agar or chocolate agar releases both X factor and V factor and it inactivates the anadases. So inactivation of the anadases is very important. Please remember this slide. Uh, you, I can have a lot of questions from this slide for your posters and in the long quiz. And next, we have uh, the phenomenon known as satellitism. So a phenomenon that helps in the recognition of hemophilus species that need V factor is uh, this one. Satel oh, sorry. It's your, it's your satellitism. So we have the V factor. Satellitism happens when an organism like Staphylococcus aureus, Pneumonia or Neisseria species produces V factor as a byproduct of metabolism. And then uh, here, the Haemophilus isolate obtains X factor from the SBA and V factor from one of these organisms. On SBA plates, tiny colonies of Haemophilus may be seen growing around the V-factor producing organism. So these are the Haemophilus colonies, the very small ones. So probably these uh, organisms are the V-factor producing organisms. 
and then the uh it could be that this one is a uh, well it is a uh, it's not saying but i guess this one is uh the colon these are colonies of sres we also have a uh, hemophilus influenza virulence factors quite a lot so uh for i tried to tabulate it for you to easily see it so we have a uh, H. influenzae, the major uh, pathogen within the genus, has a wide range of pathogenic potentials okay, because of the virulence factors. So the following virulence factors that play a role in the initiation of infection and the invasiveness of these organisms include, we have four, we have the capsule, IgA proteases, adherence through fimbriae and other structures, and outer, outer membrane proteins and LPA, LPS. So... Of all the virulence factors, the capsule, if present, plays the most significant role. So this one, the capsule, plays the most significant role. And the serologic grouping of each influenza into six antigenically distinct types, A, B, C, D, E, and F, is based on the differences in the capsular polysaccharide. This one. Before uh, widespread use of vaccine, most invasive uh, infections were caused by the encapsulated strain of H. influenzae serotype B or HIV and occurred primarily in young children. However, uh, serotype B strains are rarely seen now in children in countries using the vaccine. However, uh, still occasional serious invasive infections are seen in adults, especially in those uh, over 60 to 65 years. In, in uh, unvaccinated children, type B is a leading cause of meningitis. In contrast to other uh, serotypes, the serotype B capsule is a unique polymer composed of ribose, ribitol, and phosphate. And evidence suggests that the antiphagocytic property and anti-complementary activity, the antiphagocytic activity and the anti-complementary activity is quite a reason why this uh, type B capsule is interesting. And uh, it made uh, this, uh, these uh, properties are really important for the pathogenesis of invasive disease. However, not all strains of H. influenzae are encapsulated. Again, not all strains of H. influenzae are encapsulated. These strains are commonly referred to as non-typable H. influenzae or NTHI. Non-typable H. influenzae. Next, we have the immunoglobulin A proteases. So we have the uh, secretory IgA is present on human, clinic, uh, human mucosal surfaces of the respiratory tract, areas of which H. influenzae has a predilection. So it, it really likes those areas. IgA can bind to the bacteria and block their attachment. And H. influenzae is the only member of the genus that produces IgA protease again this is the only member of the genus that produces iga protease and the function or how the uh, the mechanism of uh, proteases is that it can cleave secretory iga and since it uh it can contribute to the this of course it can really contribute to the virulence of the organism we also have uh, adherence mechanisms well the role of adherence mechanisms as virulence factors for h influenza is not well defined though not well defined studies uh indicate the, or show that uh non-typable uh hi strains are adherent to human epithelial cells whereas most serotype b strains are not so there's a difference. And the lack of this adherent capability in type B organisms may explain the tendency for type B strains to cause systemic infections. The presence of this adherent capability of NTHI strains may explain the tendency for these strains to cause more localized infections such as acute conjunctivitis. So please remember that one. And then outer membrane components. So although the role of outer membrane uh, proteins and LPS is not well defined, antibodies directed against these antigens uh, 
may play a significant role in human immunity. And each, of, each one of these uh, components may be responsible for a specific activity such as invasiveness, attachment, and antiphagocytic function, while LPS has been shown to have a paralyzing effect on the sweeping motion of ciliated respiratory epithelium. So, much for the virulence factors. Let's go to the two patterns of the disease attributed to hemophilus influenzae. So, we have the invasive, the invasive type. We also have the localized type. The first is invasive disease caused by encapsulated strains. So we can blame it on those strains which are encapsulated in which bacteremia plays a significant role. Well, examples of invasive disease include septicemia. So, the mnemonic for this would be St. PT. Septicemia, arthritis, meningitis, epiglottitis, pneumonia, and tracheitis. Well, the second and the more common pattern of disease is uh, as a result of well this one is the result of hip vaccination is a more localized infection caused by the contiguous spread of non typeable h influenza strains it occurs within or in close proximity to the respiratory tract examples of uh, the localized infection would be uh, we have otitis media with effusion in the middle ear infection, sinusitis, and conjunctivitis. And it has also been demonstrated that the adenoids can serve as reservoirs in chronic middle ear infections and that the bacteria develop of biofilms. Next, we have uh, the uh, infections associated with other hemophilus species so we have other species we have the aegyptius we have influenza biogroup aegyptius decree and other miscellaneous species so uh, the cock weeks uh, bacillus is genetically related to hemophilus uh, influenza yes. and then um, because of their similar identifying characteristics it is hard to tell H influenzae from that of Aegyptius and H influenzae by a group Aegyptius. Well, this one was uh, observed by Robert o. Koch in Koch or Koch in 1883 in Egyptians in conjunctivitis exudates. So in those uh, conjunctivitis exudates, and hence the species name H. Aegyptius is associated with an acute contagious contagious take not acute contagious conjunctivitis or pink eye and then h influenza biogroup aegyptius and h aegyptius both can cause conjunctivitis primarily in pediatric populations uh well despite uh being um, non encapsulated a clone of h influenza biogroup aegyptius first caused a severe systemic disease known as brazilian purpuric a fever in Brazil in 1984. Uh, B BPF or Brazilian Purpuric Fever is characterized by uh, it's characterized by recurrent or concurrent conjunctivitis followed by a sudden onset of high fever, petechial or purple rash, septicemia, shock, and vascular prolapse, and sadly. It has a very high mortality rate, which is 70% within 48 hours after onset. Ouch. We also have Haemophilus ducreae or ducreae. It's a strictly human pathogen. And it's the causative agent of Shankroid. Shankroid, the soft shanker, which is a highly communicable sexually transmitted genital ulcer disease or GUD. And, uh, well, this uh, species is strictly uh, is not a part of the normal microbiota and the incubation period would range from 4 to 14 days well the most common sites of infection include the uh, penis and the labia for the females and um we also have the uh superative uh, pus forming in large or draining inguinal lymph nodes known as boobos are common in most infected patients and men have symptoms related to the inguinal tenderness and genital lesions whereas most women are asymptomatic 
And we also have uh, the miscellaneous species, H. parainfluenzae. They are present in the oral cavity and very low incidence of pathogenicity. Oh, I like this, very low incidence. Well, it still can cause otitis media and acute sinusitis. And uh, for parainfluenzae, related endocarditis, and which is uh, manifesting or having an insidious onset, Progressing disease without marked symptoms before becoming apparent. And the primary site of infection is always the mitral valve of the heart. So this one, uh, not a very nice looking picture, but a good thing for you to understand and to recognize what a chancroid is, the soft chancre. So lesions of chancroid on the penis showing a draining boo-boo, this one in the adjacent adjacent uh, groin area so it's as nice as that and then we have the uh, common sources for uh you have the laboratory diagnosis and specimen processing and isolation so the common sources include blood we have csf middle ear exudates uh, joint fluids upper and lower respiratory tract specimens swabs from conjunctiva vaginal swabs and what else in abscess drainage and for culture of the lower respiratory tract bronchial washing is recommended except in the case of patients with the cf or cystic fibrosis uh, we have uh, how to say nasal and nasopharyngeal swab specimens have no clinical value in cystic fibrosis patients in the evaluation of respiratory tract infection by these organism by H. influenzae. So, uh, hemophilus species, they die rapidly in clinical specimens. That's why uh, we need a prompt transportation and processing. Is very They are really vital for the isolation. Uh, this is especially true for genital specimens submitted for H. ducreae, which is extreme, extremely fast tedious. So this one, this organism is extremely fast tedious. Genital size first should be uh, cleaned with a sterile gauze, moistened with sterile saline before specimens are collected for the isolation of the organism. And next, a swab should be used to collect material from the base of the ulcer. As an alternative, a pus can be aspirated from buboes if they are present and direct plating on selective media at the bedside is preferred instead of using transport media because hemophilus species are susceptible to drying specimen processing in the laboratory should happen soon after should occur soon after collection for maximum recovery so they die rapidly they are susceptible to drying so remember that that's why uh, transportation and processing must be very immediate and uh the commonly utilized medium to isolate uh, hemophilus influenzae is chocolate agar and incubation should be between 33 to 37 degrees celsius in which we can observe growth after 18 to 24 hours of incubation requiring an atmosphere of 5 to 10 percent co2 so here it has been shown that a uh, chocolate agar supplemented with bacitracin 300 uh, mg per liter is an excellent medium for the isolation of hemophilus species from respiratory specimens bacitracin is added why so this is to uh, reduce, to decrease overgrowth of uh, normal respiratory microbiota. Uh, this is a significant challenge, the isolation of hemophilus species really. And growth on chocolate agar is usually seen again after 18 to 24 hours of incubation. Because of their fastidious nature, specimens submitted for H. Uh, ducreae and Aegyptius must be plated to special media. So, uh, what's the, we have the uh, enriched chocolate agar supplemented with 1% isovitalex or vitox. And for H. ducre, it has to be enriched chocolate medium or Nairobi plate. So, this Nairobi plate consists of, uh, it has two sides, the GC agar base 
on one half and the MHA agar or Miller Hinton agar on the other half. So it's like other side is the GC agar base and the MHC for the other side. And then in the place have to be uh, need to be incubated in five to ten percent CO two atmosphere. So the humidity has to be high. And please remember that H. Ducre grows best at thirty three degrees Celsius. And um, if we are on chocolate agar, we can observe that the colonies of H. influenzae uh, have these tan mucoid colonies, which are really characteristic of the encapsulated strain tan and mucoid colonies. Tan and mucoid colonies. Next, for the uh, col colony morphology, so. We have most clinical specimens are plated onto a variety of culture media and examined after 24 hours of incubation. Usually, we have SBA, uh, chocolate agar, and MAC. These uh, plates are inoculated simultaneously, simultaneously inoculated from clinical specimens from areas of the human body where hemophilus organisms are isolated. So, colonies of influenzae on chocolate agar, they appear translucent tannish, moist, smooth, and convex with a distinct mousy or bleach-like odor. So this one, uh, a common board exam question, mousy or bleach-like odor and uh, manifesting or appearing uh, as translucent, tannish, moist, smooth, convex colonies. They are really uh, trying to refer to the H. influenzae. Uh, hemophilus species sometimes grow on SBA plates around colonies of other bacterial species known this uh, well this uh, is a phenomenon known as satellitism so there is satellitism and on chocolate agar H para influenzae colonies appear tannish and drier so the difference we have influenzae para influenzae para hemolyticus hemolyticus and okay so H. influenzae colonies appear on chocolate agar. They appear tannish and drier with a medium to large size of colonies compared with H. influenzae. And again, on chocolate agar, mm -hmm. H. parahemolyticus resembles H. para influenzae. However, when grown on horse or rabbit blood agar, it is beta hemolytic, whereas H. influenzae is non hemolytic. And uh, H. ducreae. Uh, it appears small, flat, smooth, non-mucoid, transparent to opaque colonies or appear as tan or yellow. And the individual colonies can be pushed intact using a loop. So they have this loop or clumpy non-homogeneous appearance in a saline suspension. And for uh, in under the MAC agar, hemophilus species, they don't grow here. And... In SBA, hemophilus species sometimes grow around colonies. So here is the satellitism. For example, we have a staph aureus. These are the colonies of staph aureus and those growing around the staph aureus are the hemophilus species. So they, uh, the, the thing that we can really remember, uh, we have the mopsy fish like odor and the thing about satellitism. So for the microscopic uh, morphology, uh, as is common with most hemophilus species, the microscopic morphology varies from small, gram-negative, uh, cocoa bacilli to long filaments. And they have long filaments. The cocoa bacillary morphology is the more predominant form in clinical specimens of so cocoa bacillary. Capsules of H. influenzae may be observed in gram-stained direct smears as clean, non-staining areas or halos surrounding the organisms in purulent secretions. So purulent meaning pus-forming uh, secretions. Because the organism is small and pleomorphic and often stains a faint pink, uh, it can resemble the amorphous uh, serous material or serum-like or proteinaceous background material in gram stains of clinical specimens. So you should really have to take note. And then because of the low specificity and sensitivity of gram stains, an acridine orange or methylene blue stain of the specimen may help detect hemophilus. So we can have the acridine orange and the methylene blue stain. 
Well, uh, ground stains from the genital lesions for H. Ducri, uh they are pale staining gram negative uh, cocoa bacilli, and characteristically, they are arranged singly or in groups or in clusters. That's why they are having this school of fish, the school of fish, or the railroad rail, uh, railroad tracks like this appearance. They are loosely coiled clusters of organisms lined up in parallel or appearing as fingerprints. So just like this one. So uh, common board exam questions, school of fish appearance, railroad tracks, or fingerprints. And uh, what else? Yeah, that, that's all. So here uh, we have the direct smear of Haemophilus influenzae in CSF in case of meningitis. And we can observe the intracellular. They are inside intracellular and extracellular gram negative. They can be inside intracellular or extracellular. This is a case of meningitis. And then on the right side, this is a gram stain of a Haemophilus influenzae colony. So here the bacilli are slightly more elongated. Next, uh, for the laboratory identification, the first clue that an isolate might belong to the genus Haemophilus is the growth of a gram-negative pleomorphic cocobacilli on chocolate agar with no growth on, absence of growth on SBA and MAC in pure culture. This is again the first clue that an isolate might belong to the genus Haemophilus. So we have uh, the first test for the lab ID or lab identification. We have X factor and V factor requirements. So this uh, manner of testing is the traditional approach for hemophile species identification, and it uses and it uses a uh, well impregnate. It uses impregnated discs or strips. And when hemophilus species are grown anaerobically, they do not require heme but still require NAD. So, this picture, if it requires both X and V factors, this organism would be identified as hemophilus influenzae. So, if it requires the X and the V factor, then they can be identified as your H influenzae. So this organism needs only V factor and would be identified as Haemophilus para influenzae. So growth is present only where the strip of the V factor is present. So meaning it needs only the V factor. So an organism that requires the V factor is or can be identified as Haemophilus para influenzae. However, this one is the opposite. It requires only the X factor. So we can observe growth here. Uh, the probable species is Agregatibacter arphrophilus because this species can appear to be human dependent on initial isolation. So it's dependent on human. Next, uh, we have the porphyrin test. This porphyrin test is an alternative method for differentiating the heme-producing species of Haemophilus. The porphyrin test can be performed in agar, broth, or on a disc. And the principle was the principle of the test. It is based on the ability of the organism to convert the substrate um, delta amino levolinic acid, ALA, so conversion of ALA into porphyrins or porphobilinogen, intermediates in the synthesis of X factor after or post incubation at 35 degrees Celsius for four hours porphobilinogen can be detected by the addition of the COVAC reagent it's also known as paradimethyl aminobenzaldehyde again COVAC reagent is added for us to detect porphobilinogen after an incubation of 35 at 35 degrees Celsius for four hours. So we have the COVAC reagent known as the paradimethyl aminobenzaldehyde. And then um, what else? After the addition of this uh, reagent, COVAC reagent, a red color can be seen on forms in the lower aqueous 
phase of porphobilinogen if 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 porphobilinogen is present or is positive for the presence of porphobilinogen and then uh, porphyrins can be how can we detect using we can detect them using a uv light at a wavelength of 360 nanometers we have by using the wood lamp woods lamp so porphyrins fluoresce so the fluorescence of porphyrins so we can observe them as reddish orange color under uv light well the main advantage of this one of the porphyrin test is that the x factor is not needed and the problem of carryover is eliminated. However, uh, the disadvantage is that a primary ID is based on a negative uh, test result. Meaning, for example, in H. influenzae, negative means the absence of fluorescence plus no color change happens after the addition of the COVAC reagent. So this one, under UV light, uh, the organism on the bottom, this one, is exhibiting a positive porphyrin reaction. Well, the organism on top, this one, is porphyrin negative. So these are the biochemical tests such as carbohydrate fermentation, which can help further differentiate hemophile species in addition to indole, urease, and only thin their carboxylase tests. They are used to biotype some hemophile species. So just uh, please take a uh, note of the differences and the similarities. And here further, we have the uh, differential test for the hemophilus biogroups. So because we have uh, many biogroups under hemophilus influenzae, and we only have three biotypes under para-influenzae. Next, for the treatment, uh, each influenzae infection is invasive. So, of course, the patient really has to be hospitalized, so needs to be hospitalized. And uh, the recommended treatment for life-threatening illnesses caused by H. influenzae would be cefotaxime or ceftriaxone. So we have cefotaxime or ceftriaxone. So alternative drugs include uh, SXT or trimetoprim sulfamethoxazole. We have imepinem and cyprofloxacin. Well, uh, with ampicillin, there is an we uh it has been observed that there was this increased resistance so it should not be used alone rather uh use ampicillin under a combination therapy however if the uh infection is non life threatening we can use amoxicillin clavul clavulanate or oral or or oral second generation third generation cephalosporin or xxt xxt and we also have uh, the second half of the of this uh, presentation would be the HASIC group. HASIC is an acronym consisting of the first initial letter of each genus represented in the group. So again, HASIC, that's it. So uh, the characteristic of this uh, group, so members of this group of gram-negative bacilli have in common uh, they uh, have this uh, fastidious nutritional requirements and enhanced growth with increased CO2. Members of the genus Cardiobacterium are capnophilic and they need CO2. In contrast to hemophile species, the latter four members of the HASIC group are considered more dysgonic. What do you mean by dysgonic? Meaning uh, they are slower or poorer growing organisms. So, we only have the latter four members except the H, okay? And then, uh, what else? Uh, these organisms have a uh, their predilection for the attachment to heart valves. Usually, damage or prosthetic makes many of them an important cause of endocarditis. So cause they can cause endocarditis and what else uh endocarditis most commonly involves the heart valves and the lesion referred to as vegetation so please remember this one heart vegetation or the lesion it will refer to the uh the lesion so uh composed uh, what is the composition of the vegetation uh composed of platelets uh, polymorphonuclear cells fibrin microorganisms and monocytes and Additional organisms that account for most cases of endocarditis are the viridans group of streptococci.
and staph aureus as pneumonia coagulase negative staphylococci and the so-called nutritionally various streptococci and enterococci so members of the HASIC group they include both fermentative and non-fermentative gram-negative bacilli normally they are the normal biota of the oral cavity which allows their introduction into the bloodstream and results in infections uh, these uh, the members of the HASIC group they are opportunists and generally require a compromised host so uh, what are the risk factors that we need to take note for invective bacterial endocarditis? So, uh, possibly a tooth extraction if you are having a history of endocarditis, surgery of the gingiva, a heart valve surgery, or mitral MVP or mitral valve prolapse, then these are really considered risk factors for developing infective bacterial endocarditis. So uh, this uh, table represents the summary of the key reactions and characteristics of the HASIC and Capnocytophaga species. So uh, just please take note of the uh, things that I have encircled and underlined there. Next, we have the aggregate type actor, Afrophilus. So from the Greek word Afros and philia, meaning foam loving or desiring high concentration of CO2. Uh, it is the one of the most prevalent species in the HASIC group involved in again endocarditis and it's linked to bone and joint infections so bone and joint infections not only the heart but also the bone and it does not need co2 yet does grow, grow better in its presence and usually uh, we can find this in dental plaques and gingival scrapings so if you are having an infection with this organism the signs and symptoms would be a fever you have a congestive heart failure embolism and a heart murmur okay here uh what is this uh, picture talking or portraying is that uh, aggregate tibacter atrophilus isolate that is not x factor dependent and is growing over the entire surface of a tsa plate it does not uh it does not depend on the presence of the x factor aggregate dibacter afrophilus uh this one uh we can observe that this uh, organism is growing on sheep blood agar and the gram stain morphology of your aggregate i are afrophilus next um this one we have the aggregate dibacter actinomycetum comitans so uh, this was formerly in the genus Actinobacillus and the remaining members of the Actinobacillus include animal pathogens or animal endogenous biota that in general do not routinely cause infections in humans. Human tissue infections has been attributed to, well, bites. Take note bites by sheep, pigs, cattle, and horses or through contact with these animals. Uh, we have aggregate bacter actinomycetum comitans is further divided into six serotypes uh, A through F based on the surface polysaccharide and A, B, and C are the most common serotypes and what else the, the this organism is found as normal oral microbiota in humans and is a major it is a major again contributor of a periodontitis periodontitis it can really uh, lead to the destruction of the alveolar bone that supports the teeth so the bone that supports the teeth and has been isolated from blood lung tissue abscesses of the mouth and brain and sinuses so this picture is showing a case of an advanced periodontitis what is periodontitis? Well, it is an inflammation of the periodontium caused by a complex reaction initiated when subgingival plaque bacteria are in close contact with the epithelium of the gingival sulcus. So for the aggregate back term, actinomycetum comitans some major virulence factors include collagenate collagenase and a leukotoxin that is toxic to pmns or polymorphonuclear cells and monocytes so a actinomycetum comitans grow better with an increased co2 the isolates need more than 24 hours 
for visible growth and a distinctive star shape this distinctive star shape with four to six points four to six points one two three four five six this one has six points in the center of the colonies is often seen at 48 hours the star shape is best observed after 48 hours take note best seen after 48 hours of incubation the star shape is yes by using uh by using 100 times magnification under a light microscope we can use a light microscope or a stereo microscope light microscope or a stereo microscope at the highest magnification available in broth uh well the organism is granular and might adhere to the sides of the tube so it's granular and adhere to the sides of the tube and uh, another is uh, isolates are catalase they are catalase positive oxidase variable they do not grow on mac agar negative for x and v factor requirements raise indole esculine and citrate and axi Actinomycetin comatans is typically rearranged negative, which differentiate it from the members of the genus Actinobacillus. Glucose fermentation positive, with or without gas, although the addition of serum to the carbohydrate containing medium is often necessary to demonstrate fermentation. And this one is sensitive to penicillin in vitro. And uh, we also have Cardiobacterium hominis. So we have two species, hominis and valvarum, and uh, the genus, well, both are, both of them are pleomorphic, non-motile, fastidious, gram-negative bacilli, found as normal microbiota of the nose, mouth, and throat, and may be present in the GIT. And oral infections or dental procedures usually proceed endocarditis. And the usual uh, clinical manifestation is really endocarditis. This is the usual manifestation. Often manifesting with very large vegetations. And however, there is no fever. And it infects the aortic valve. The aortic valve. And uh, what else? Uh, for the gram stains of the bacilli, uh, often show false negative, false sorry, false gram positive reactions. So false gram positive, false gram positive reactions in parts of the cells, and uh, the organisms tend to uh, form rosettes. Rosettes in this rosettes on uh, forms or swellings or long filaments or stick-like structures in yeast extract. And they also are positive for pitting on the agar. Treatment include aminoglycoside and penicillin. We also have Echinella corrodens. So this one is a normal biota of the bowel and oral cavities. Infections uh, usually occur or happen as a result of trauma, especially after, again, bites, bites or fights, like clench fist wounds or after the skin has been broken by human teeth and risk factors include oral and poor dental hygiene an opportunistic pathogen in not in healthy but in immunocompromised individuals and this is the cause of adult periodontitis meningitis empyema pneumonia osteomyelitis arthritis and post-op tissue infections and um, in drug addicts, um, this manifests as cellulitis and it has a predilection to heart valves. So this one shows the growth of Echinella corrodens on chocolate agar. Again, uh, the thing, common word exam question will be uh, from a human bite wound. So what is the organism in question? It could be Echinella corrodens. So, Echinella corrodens uh, isolates are fastidious, gram negative cocobacilli, and uh, that grow best under conditions of increased CO2 with hemin. Uh, they are non motile, um, oxidase positive, and asaccharolytic. They are catalyzed neg and often produce a yellow pigment. About 45% 40 of the isolates of E corrodens pit or make a depression or corrode the surface of the agar hence the name corrodens because it corrodes the surface of the agar and uh, a slight greening effect secondary to growth may occur around the colonies on sba 
And another board exam question that we need to remember would be a chlorine bleach like odor from the agar surface. Other surface, sorry, and it might adhere to the sides of the tube and produce granules similar to which one? Similar to your actinomycetes and cometins might also adhere to the sides of the tube. And then we have Kingella. Kingella, uh, the genus consists of four species. Kingella kingae, we have the, the nitrificans, oralis, and potus. And um, these uh, organisms are recognized as important pathogens in the pediatric population and they have a predilection to the bones and joints. Okay, and joints. The most common cause of osteoarthritis infection in children younger than four years of age. So, um, characteristics include they are uh, cocobacillary or short bacilli with squared ends that occur in pairs or in short chains. They resist decolorization in gram stains. They are nutritionally fastidious. They are oxidase positive, catalase negative, and they are fermenters of glucose and other sugars, but they ignore there is no production of gas. Kingella can grow on Neisseria selective agar like MTM, the modified Thayer Martin medium, and they can. The thing is, you might um, get confused with them because they resemble Neisseria gonorrhea. Uh, Kingella kingae. We have two types of colony morphologies. We have the spreading, corroding colony or a smooth convex. And we also have the beta hemolytic colony. So this type of hemolysis may show or demonstrate or may appear beneath the colony or in close proximity after 24 hours and becomes more evident after 48 hours. The isolates are susceptible to penicillin. So that's the end of the slide. I hope you can remember all those things, but just Please take note of those common board questions that I have thrown so that you can remember them. Thank you and God bless.